What was well, it uh, I think between that, us and him? How, how is it working right now? Well, I think he is uh, feeling his way. It's on-the-job training. I think he wants as much exposure as possible. He's only had two news conferences. I mean, that's actually quite a, quite a bit compared to his predecessor. But at the same time, I think it's a little early to tell. He's given a lot of interviews, that's true. He's very accessible in that aspect, if you're a superpower in the, in the media. But um, I don't think he's that open. I think he's very cautious. I think he's, he really, uh, every question that's put to him, he thinks it through, which is okay. And he always says, he doesn't always say, but he says, I don't want to answer that unless I know what it's all about. So I think he's very cautious, as but, he was during the campaign. But I think he's very good as a communicator. And I think he has recognized that communicating with the American people includes holding news conferences. Uh, it includes uh, giving interviews. I think, uh, by and large, he's been fairly open so far. But it's a very controlled openness. He doesn't just walk out into the press room one morning and say, gosh, uh, there are a couple of reporters. I'll walk over and see if they have anything they need to ask me about. Uh, when he goes to talk to a reporter, uh, he has a reason for okay, talking yeah, to them. Yeah. And, and uh, it wipes out, I mean, he's really emphasizing diversity in the last session. He, but he called stars and strikes. He called Huffington and so forth and tells them, They're gonna, we're going to call it on you and you're going to be sitting here, I, I think that's very bad. I, I think they'll be asking you what are you going to say. Yeah. yeah well, one of the interesting things is I, I interviewed the president, uh, not Sunday, but the Sunday before on Face the Nation, and he had been on television practically all week. He'd done a long interview on 60 Minutes uh, on a Sunday. He had held a 55-minute news conference on Tuesday. Uh, he had done a uh, virtual online town hall on a Wednesday or Thursday, he had made two long statements. And as I was getting ready to do this interview, I, I thought, is there gonna be enough to ask him about? Mm -hmm. There is so much going on. The problems are so severe now that after all that exposure on television, I still didn't have an, enough time on Face the Nation Sunday to ask him all the questions that needed to be asked. But I think that just underlines the severity of the problems more than anything else. But uh, you know, I mean, the Associated Press wrote five separate stories out of the interview that mm -hmm. I did with him, which tells you that there's just a lot going on. Uh, but he, he's, uh, he's very good at this. Uh, he, he, he's very good at it. And he's good at filibustering, too. He can be. He's, he's very good at not answering the questions. He'll give you a, a, a five paragraphs and an answer, <laughs> and you say, what did he say? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so far, I, I would just say this, so far, so good. Uh, I, I, I think... Uh, I think as far as dealing with the press, he's off overall to a pretty good start. Looks like I've got another chat room question, so I'm gonna sit here and read it off the screen. This one comes from Jenza Misfit. Uh, hello, Bob and Helen. I am in Iowa, where hey. our largest newspaper uh, recently laid off its political cartoonist and illustrator of more than 30 years. Uh, okay, uh, nationally known Brian Duffy. Uh, faulting, of course, the economic crisis. With the loyal re uh, we, the loyal readers, are still devastated. If someone with that kind of legacy cannot be spared, is anyone in the industry safe? Your take on that. You take that. <laughs> well, it's tough. And, and that's the question we're all trying to answer. And we're all hoping the answer is not uh, uh, yet, that no one can be spared. Uh, the newspapers, the problems newspapers are having is not so much the problems with journalists. It's, it's finding the, the revenue, finding the money to uh, uh, keep these very expensive enterprises going. I mean, these are not charities. They're, they're businesses, and they have to okay. be businesses. Because uh, you can't, ha I for, am one of those who believes you can't endow newspapers. There is even talk of that like you would a university. What are you going to do when a big oil company comes in and says we want to contribute uh, uh, to the endowment? Or what are you going to do with with any uh, the coal industry comes in and says we we want to? Is that still free and open press? I think you'd, you'd have to uh, kind of question that. I think so, they're meeting their Waterloo by being on Wall Street, and uh, 
the kind of profits that <coughs> demanded of newspapers is unheard of. 25% is unheard of in the business. But they have got to find some way. They've got to find a business model to keep these businesses going. I mean, nobody can operate a business if, it, if it's going broke, I mean, if it's losing money. And if they depend on advertising, of course, it, it's yeah. a further TV. And, and, and the other part is that while they were having a hard time, while we're seeing like, you know, the, the newspapers have lost a lot of want ad business, which was, the, for many newspapers, was the biggest thing, the biggest source of revenue that they had, going to things like Craigslist and these other things uh, on, online. All of that is happening while suddenly the country find it, finds itself in, this, in the most serious economic recession we've had since, since the Great Depression, I suppose. So uh, all of those things coming together. I and mean, if we can kind of get the economy going again here, I think newspapers like other businesses are going to have a have a chance here. But uh, right now, it's uh, everything is sort of running against them, quite frankly. 